I spent 24 hours in Iceland, and I didn't take a single cliche photo. So it's true, I went to Iceland, but really it was just a long way over. I packed all my gear, and we headed to the airport. After trying to get some sleep, sitting next to a guy who figured it was a good idea to take his shoes off while flying. It's not a good idea, don't do it, that's nasty. Well, anyway, when we touched down in Keflavik, of course, I gotta clear this up. This was a family trip, it wasn't just me, so if you see any other gingers, it's just the fam, don't worry. And... Because of that, I was unlucky enough to be in the middle seat of the rental car when, for the first leg of uh, this trip, so it, getting pictures was hard, but I was able to capture this one, and I think it was actually kind of nice. Alright, but before we could go any further, what did I bring? I mean, I, I couldn't go to this gorgeous landscape ridden area. I mean, it's Iceland for goodness sakes. I, I, it's a trip I've always wanted to go on without bringing something that could handle it. Of course, I brought my Fujifilm XS10. With the in-body stabilization and the F-Log capabilities and the 26 megapixels, nothing's more capable of capturing this Nordic landscape. Now, also, I brought the uh, Sigma 18 to 55 f 2.8 which would practically live on my camera the entire time now i also brought fujifilm 50 to 230 millimeter for those tighter landscape shots i also brought my 50 millimeter f2 tt artisan fully manual prime lens but i didn't use it that much i really thought this would just be good for street photography and more tactile hands-on experience but i didn't really use it for that so anyway, we took the southern portion of the ring road, which went around uh, through Kethlevik and up into um, the mountainous region of the southern, uh, southwestern uh, region of Iceland and back to Reykjavik. It was a great opportunity to take photos. So, first little part of this trip, we stumbled across a lighthouse, which was pretty interesting. The leading lines of the power lines made some of these photos more tolerable in my mind. On the way back to the ring road, we passed this little cafe, which is one of my favorite pictures from this trip. So it's kind of all downhill from here. We also passed this big lobster on the way, which was pretty neat. Later we visited this big crater caused by a volcano, I think. Anyway, I got this shot. It is a really neat picture. You can see the person in their yellow jacket with the the textures of the mountain that they are standing on, or the part of the crater, and then the mountains in the background just really add some depth, and I love it. Anyway, down the road a little bit was this long waterfall. Not tall, long, like thick. Anyway, also the sun decided it was actually going to peak out which was blasting this landscape with light, which made it quite difficult to properly expose the shadows and the light. So most of these photos I'm not a huge fan of because they're quite just overdone with the light. I was able to snap a few of these landscape shots, which ended up to be okay. The next stop was called Geyser, which if you're anything like me and you have the maturity of an eighth grader, you'd find that name kind of amusing. This was an area where some geothermic uh, geysers were. The occasional sulfuric smell would pass thanks to these pools of, you know, superheated water bursting through the surface of the earth. We also climbed up this hill 
that let you see all the pools, which provided for some really interesting landscape shots. There's also this river sneaking behind this mountain, which also provided for some really neat shots that I really do enjoy. Anyway, so after that, we headed back to Ricky. At one point in our journey, I woke up and noticed this remarkable scene. I was able to get my dad to pull the car over and took one of my best shots to date, in my opinion. Now, in another stroke of luck, a small plane was flying over the scene, and I figured this would be a perfect subject to just add into it and tie it all together. And it was just perfect. Now in Reykjavik, besides being tempted to buy things I'd only wear once, I was able to get some nice cityscapes of the more traditional side of town. The lovely, bold, bright colors of the houses were, were being begged to be shot. I also found this one fluffy boy who liked sleeping in one of the shops, but he was on the move since they decided to close. Later on, we found him and another cat in an old-fashioned Icelandic standoff. After grabbing dinner, we decided to head to the Airbnb, where the door intrigued me enough to take this shot. Since at the time of filming, it was June, and the days were really long in Iceland. The nights were only around four hours, which was nuts. It was crazy because we decided to go to sleep around 11, and it was still brighter than it is right now. And then when we got up, the sun had already been up for like four hours. It was crazy. Now, the night after we settled in and went to sleep and got up, we headed promptly to the airport to get our next flight. Now, if you are following me on Instagram, at TreeCrabWill, same as my YouTube name, you know where I was headed. Now, this anyway wraps up my 24 hour stay in Iceland. And there might be another video pertaining to why I was in Iceland for a layover. All right, well, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.